Hi, my name is Nick Santor and I'm the CEO of Curricula. Curricula is a cybersecurity education company that teaches organizations, both big and small, how to not get hacked. And today we're going to be talking about cybersecurity for small businesses. And I'm here with Catherine from Cabbage. This month is Cybersecurity Awareness Month and an initiative that was started in 2004. And basically it's to bring awareness to citizens, small businesses, organizations across the country about how to promote and deal with cybersecurity inside of their organizations. And as a small business, you're open to some of the biggest risks that are available because you don't have the funding or resources or availability to do some of the cybersecurity stuff that all of the large businesses are doing. So what we're going to talk about today is kind of some of our experiences of how we deal with cybersecurity, not only at Cabbage, but within our organizations that we speak with. And then we're going to give you some real great takeaways that you can use during this month to help promote cybersecurity within your businesses and at home. So why don't we get started there? We'll ask Catherine a couple questions. Um, first is, what does cybersecurity look like for the management team at Cabbage and kind of what are some of the efforts and programs that you guys are doing? I think there are a couple of different levels of security. Um, it starts with physical access control, so we're careful about that. We make sure that folks are badging in and out. Um, we make sure that only the people who need access to certain key systems have access to that, and we mm -hmm. monitor and control that. Um, we require that um, everybody has strong passwords to get into the network and to get into the system. You have a public and a private network. All of those things that you can imagine would be important for security. Um, and again, only a few people have access to any sort of personal information about our customers. Obviously, we take security very seriously because we do have a lot of information about hundreds of thousands of small businesses in the U.S. Right, yeah, I saw uh, coming in, the visitor program was pretty robust as far as um, swiping in from downstairs all the way to the access control from iPads and the front desk and all the access controls. So that's very important for businesses of this size, at least. So training do you put your employees through throughout the year to educate them on some of those things that you just mentioned? We do two types of training. During orientation, everyone um, learns about the access controls that we have and the importance of security. Every year we also do privacy training for our employees to understand um, how and when non-public personal information can be shared with a third party. Um, that includes information about our customers, but it also includes um, security controls and access. So I think it's, it's generally something that everybody knows is very important. Um, people hold each other accountable, even from the physical side. If somebody's walking in behind somebody else and they don't swipe in, then they'll usually hear something from the person in front of them like, hey, what are you doing? How swipe in before you come yeah, that's in. That's great. Yeah, it's, uh, especially we're in the South here, it's uh, one thing to be cordial and hold doors open, but it's another because everyone that comes in that door has access to sensitive information inside. I think it takes an event to get people to understand why it's important. When we first moved into this, we've been in this building for five years, but when we first moved into this space up on the top floor, uh, we had an office creeper. Someone who was coming in, a couple of them were coming in and they were eating lunch here and they were walking around. <laughs> um, and I think everybody, you know, we're big enough now that everybody doesn't know everybody else. Right. So um, people are walking around with badges on, they have their photo, um, and the expectation is that you may not know the person, but you see them and they have a badge and they swipe in. Um, then you have a comfort level that they probably belong yeah. here. What do you feel for the small businesses, a lot of your customers are out there, what do you feel like the culture of security amongst those small businesses are? Um, do you feel like it's there, it's not there, or anything that they can do to help get it there? I think people care. I think everybody's really anxious in general about the security of their information, whether it's their banking account data or whether it's you know, other personal information, even their information in social media accounts. I think everybody is a little anxious um, that someone's going to get access to their stuff. I think the last election cycle really raised awareness about that threat from um, other countries, other nations, other governments, um, and just individual hackers that are pretty much always trying to figure out how they can exploit the vulnerabilities that exist in our security systems. Great. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head when you said it takes an event for someone to realize how important this is. Um, I was just recently reading an article about a startup that was growing pretty quickly. Um, they have an accountant that handles a lot of their payments for different vendors and, and whatever the case may be. And at the end of the month, they get this bill uh, that came from somewhere that they bought furniture, apparently. And the accountant paid it, and it was $50,000. And when they're reviewing this, they talked amongst the team and said, well, 
who bought fifty thousand dollars worth of furniture? And you know, everyone looks around. I didn't buy any of that stuff. And then they go to the account and they go, "Yeah, you emailed me about this to to purchase this furniture, and then you gave the money to wire the, you know, the funds over." And I just did it. I didn't ask any questions. So long story short, they lost that fifty thousand. That's gone. And uh, you know, again, one of those events makes you realize: step back for a second and take technology out of the equation and look at your processes and procedures and look at, well, how do we authorize funds? How do we create you know, payments to vendors and bank accounts and things like that? But um, that's a real story and this stuff happens all the time. It happened to us, actually. It happens to us really? all the time that there are people who spoof our email addresses and they send um, emails saying, hey, I need you to send this wire for me for $2 million, for $500,000, for whatever it is. Um, and one time a couple of years ago, somebody came pretty close to moving forward um, with a wire and we were able to stop it. Um, I think some of the ways we can control that is number one, awareness. Everybody now knows that's a thing mm -hmm. and that they need to watch out for that. I mean, Rob or I would never send a note to someone saying, hey, can you please wire $5 million to an account? That's just not how we operate. But we also have um, software that we use, accounting software that we use, that requires multiple approvals for funds to be sent. So it's not like anybody can just send a wire. It has to go through our accounting system, which requires that someone has submitted the invoice, somebody else has approved it, and somebody else, even different than that, is actually moving the money so there are a lot of checks and balances yeah yeah there's um many cases on on that front and even there was a university that was working with some construction vendors and a uh, pretty well-known construction vendor and they would make payments every month towards the university and someone spoofed or created a new domain that looked like the construction vendor and they wired out 1.8 million dollars to them and they didn't find out until a month later and that money's gone um, same thing here in Atlanta, uh, a Bitcoin, large Bitcoin payment processor here uh, did the same thing where their CFO, you know, uh, sent over some Bitcoin and it was in the over $1 million range and uh, they had to lay off almost half their staff based off this. So, um, and it, they thought insurance would cover this. And, you know, that's one of the other big mistakes small businesses make is they buy this cyber insurance and uh, as if everything's taken care of, if an event happens and it's just like, regular insurance for cars and, and whatnot, if you leave your keys in the car and someone steals it, they're gonna look at that as negligence. And same thing, if you light your own house on fire, they're gonna look at that as negligence or some other type of insurance scam and not pay out on it. Um, what we're starting to see is that people are relying on this insurance as being a you know a fallback, and in reality, it's not. So um, something to be very cautious about, but these events, like you mentioned, is. Um, they continue to happen. And one of the things that small businesses could take a step back and look at is all of their controls on how they authorize and operate their payments to vendors, customers, and themselves. I don't think small businesses also have the advantage of a forcing mechanism. Um, a company at our size, we, we work with large financial institutions. We've been audited by you know, the FDIC and a bunch of other governmental organizations, and we have to provide SOC audit um, results and you know, I, and financial audit results, and I think that forces us to be um, airtight, if you right. will, on those points. But small businesses don't have access to that, and they really, I mean, in so many ways, small businesses are disadvantaged because they don't get access to all the tools that large businesses have, whether it's inventory management or whether it's payroll or whether it's security training or audit functions. Um, and so, it's great when there are businesses that recognize that and try to bring those types of tools to them. Right. Um, off of those, some of those stories we talked about, do you have any personal story that has happened to you where maybe your personal account has been hacked at any time in your life that you'd like to share? Uh, very recently, this summer, my Airbnb account was hacked. Okay. And um, I noticed it and because I tried to log in and I wasn't able to log in. And so I emailed them and I said, hey, I can't get into my account. I think somebody's taken it over because there's some strange email address in here that I don't recognize. At the time, some people were texting me saying, hey, I can't get into the unit. Um, and I just thought it was um, a wrong number, but it turns out they were actually listing properties in my account. Oh, wow. And so then um, I went to use my Airbnb account. I've never listed a property before, but I've used it as a, as a renter, so to speak, um, and booked a place in New York. I'm leaving to go up there with my family. And um, right before we leave, I learned that they'd canceled that particular place. We didn't have a place to stay. Um, and it was very, very frustrating. We worked with Airbnb. They were not as helpful as I would have liked. Yeah, yeah. But it was a very frustrating experience as a consumer. And and even further, after I did all the stuff I was supposed to do, I changed my password. I made it really hard to guess. I changed the email address and the account. Two days later, they had taken the account over again. Wow. That's a pretty intense story then. Uh, 
I've had a, uh, not with Airbnb, I've had an experience with StubHub. And uh, one day I was out um, playing soccer. I come back and I check my phone and I see an authorization from StubHub for 900 something dollars. What the heck? So I look at that. It was for a basketball game here in Atlanta. And uh, the Cavs, I think, were coming into town. So it was, uh, LeBron was a big game at the time. And uh, someone bought those tickets and then they resold them somewhere else on, on StubHub. And what happened is that they had a direct connection to PayPal to immediately authorize any transaction as long as you had access to the StubHub account. So traditionally, anytime you have a, a stored credit card or some type of payment, you have some type of sub authorization in place saying put in your, you know, the, the CBC code or something on the credit card to verify you are who you are when you're making that payment and have access to that card. Um, it just shot it right through to the bank account. So when I talked to StubHub, I called them up and emailed them and they basically said, you know, we're looking into it. And then a week later, um, they said, yeah, you bought these. You know, this was you doing that. I said, well, you can check that because there's IP checks and all types of verification they can do to see where fraud takes place, just like credit cards do, and uh, completely ignored it. So little did they know they were talking to the CEO of a major cybersecurity education company. Um, so we put them on blast and wrote a blog article exactly about the scenario and the steps and processes that took place and talk with PayPal. And they were actually pretty good about it. PayPal refunded the money directly to me. Um, but since then I closed the, the StubHub account. I'll never use StubHub again. And uh, they were just so unresponsive on the issue. The funny part is after we wrote that blog article, we get a significant amount of traffic coming into that specific article and dozens and dozens of other people where the same exact event is happening to them with the same connection to PayPal. So since then, I'm not sure if they've updated their system, but again, um, you look at all these events that we're, we're relying on a third party vendor to handle all of our private information, our bank accounts, mortgage companies, uh, our credit monitoring, you know, uh, situations. And as great as our cybersecurity could be, you know, we're putting a lot of faith into some of these other vendors. Gonna go change my StubHub password, I think, or maybe close the account. Yeah, I would close it. <laughs> Are you? Okay, so with all these stories that took place, I think that's one thing that uh, that's kind of what we built our business on is telling stories to teach people about cybersecurity. Um, do you have any other recommendations that you would you know talk about uh, small businesses on how to promote uh, with their employees cybersecurity? I think it's important to understand exactly what the risks are in the business. So taking inventory of all of the accounts to which um, access could also give that user access to funds is really mm -hmm. important. So it's not just your bank account. Um, it could also be your accounting platform. It could also be your merchant account if you're accepting payments via credit card. I think it's very important to understand who has access to those things to make sure that you're closely monitoring and managing the credentials for those accounts, that they're not the same credentials for all the accounts, um, and that somewhere you, you've catalogued what all of those um, users names and passwords are and the accounts. It's probably the most important thing um, and of course keeping that stuff in a safe place. But definitely letting folks in your business know that you're that you are aware, you're paying attention, you're monitoring, you're auditing because a lot of the risks that we face I think are human risks. It's people who make mistakes, people who make poor choices, people who have, you know, malicious intent and I think it's important to um, you know, keep the honest people honest and, you know, let the other folks know that you're paying attention. Yep, I, I love that, uh, the need to know access and, and managing your accounts. I think that's a great recommendation because as you uh, have a small business and you start to grow, uh, you know, maybe one or two people have access to the bank accounts and credit cards and financial information, and then that continues to grow for what reason? You know, why does the entire company have access to the credit card accounts? Or, you know, if you're 10 employees, why is everyone able to log into the bank accounts? Um, so I think taking an audit and really stepping back and one of our tips is kind of that assessment. So use this month of October as a security awareness month, not only to talk about security with your employees, but look at the business of your organization and how you operate in cybersecurity. Do an audit of what accounts do we have out there? Who has access to those accounts? And I'm telling you right now, if everyone in the company has access to your bank account, there's a problem. There should only be a limited amount, just like you said, a need to know access. Um, the second recommendation that I would recommend is using some type of password manager. So again, with all of these accounts and bank accounts and, and uh, you know, you name it, you know, having a silly password associated to those where it's easy for an attacker to get in is, uh, you know, it's like giving candy to a baby at this point. Um, so protecting yourself against that, 
is really important as well as anything that does have a password or a financial account or banks or you know you name it with your vendors uh, use multi-factor authentication whenever possible and what multi-factor is for for everyone watching is uh, if your bank account if someone stole your password um, they couldn't just log right into your account they would have to use some other form of authentication so a, a pin number sent to your email or your cell phone that way you get an alert saying hey someone's trying to log in your account right now um, otherwise if you don't have those things set up you know you're going to realize that a couple days later and look at your bank account and say whoa this just got washed out and i should have been alerted i think it's important to also remember that email is a way that people get easy access to passwords because it's if you know the the email address for the account then you just change the password you log into the email account and there you go now you have access um, and multi-factor authentication by the way is not the same to all businesses it really should be two discrete devices um, that are used to authenticate an account unfortunately a lot of um, banks for example they call it multi-factor authentication but just because you know that there's a picture of a butterfly when you go to log into your account that's not multi-factor authentication that's just a picture of a butterfly right. so I, I think that you know a lot of large institutions that frankly control a lot of our, our personal information and our, our assets they should take more care in managing the way they control access to those accounts yep and the last tip that I would recommend for uh, businesses of all sizes, but especially small businesses, is some type of security awareness training. So this month of October is based on National Cybersecurity Awareness Month. So again, we're reassessing our businesses this month. And one of the things that you look at is how do you educate all of your employees about the things that are a risk to the business? So things such as social engineering and phishing, um, easy way to get passwords. You know, an employee can come in uh, if they have access to some engineering account, bank account, HR systems, you name it, um, a swift email that looks just like one of those systems that they log into all the time can, you know, be put right through from an employee putting in their username and password, and then uh, that actually gets sent over to the hacker, and then the hacker uses that account information to do whatever they want with. So, uh, and again, that's phishing. There's... Uh, awareness on physical security so like what we talked about before swiping in the door not holding them open for people um, there's security awareness on passwords so don't make your password cupcake and then your birthday because those are very very easy to guess or maybe your dog's name which is on your Facebook profile and then your birthday uh, again stuff like that is super easy to guess uh, for a hacker but um, you know all of these different elements of what security awareness is supposed to be about is to build the culture of security amongst your employees and your organization similar to the way that we treat safety inside of organizations or safety in your own personal life. If you're you know, gonna walk across a busy street, there's a reason you look both ways before you cross that street. It's built into our culture. Safety is part of what we do. And we need to get our businesses across the country and across the world to react that same way when it comes to cybersecurity. So with security awareness, you can check out some of the stuff that we're doing with curricula at getcurricula.com. Um, and actually we're doing a promotion this month with Cabbage where you'll be able to watch a free episode on ransomware and teach your employees about what ransomware is and how it affects your business. Any other uh, last words before we jump off here? Nope. I, I, other than for our customers, we serve hundreds of thousands of small businesses. Um, I, I hope that they take this message to heart, and, and certainly I hope that they realize that they do have access to tools and, and technologies they can use to make their businesses more secure. Great. Well, thanks for joining, Catherine, and thanks, everyone, for joining today. We'll see you later.